We have some fog to start off this morning to begin your Wednesday, but how does fog actually form? Well, Chris Mulcahy is here to raise our weather IQ. Let's talk ground clouds, AKA fog. We're lowering the visibilities in this week's weather IQ. Fog is simply a cloud that touches the ground, where depending on several factors can lower visibilities down to zero, making it nearly impossible to see in front of you. Interesting fact, fog droplets are extremely fine, where you can fit one billion of them inside of a teaspoon. Here's what fog needs to form. One, a wet ground where water evaporates into water vapor, then condenses into fog. Two, a clear sky. And number three, calm winds. The most common type of fog is radiational fog, and that's what we most commonly see here. Using dry ice to accelerate the process, picture overnight, you have calm winds and a clear sky. All that moisture at the surface will rise up, evaporate, condense, and eventually forms a ground cloud. If there's no wind, all that fog is just building at the surface, but if you add a wind, it eventually could break up the fog. Some other types of fog, advection fog. Advection means the transport of air horizontally. When warm air rides over a cool surface, fog is formed. This fog is most common on the Pacific coast. This is the fog that you see around the Golden Gate Bridge. Valley fog. This is appropriately named and happens usually during winter. When the mountains cap the air's lift, fog gets trapped in the lower elevations or in the valley. And freezing fog. This is simply when fog droplets form and freeze onto solid surfaces. The National Weather Service will issue a freezing fog advisory if this happens. And lastly, fog's worst enemy is the sun. Fog is usually gone by the afternoon because the sun warms it up in the morning, causing it to rise, then dissipate. I hope that cleared the air on fog. I'm meteorologist Chris Mulcahy with WCNC Charlotte.